Hello everyone and welcome to my Bible study of the book of James. We're studying about James gives instruction on godly wisdom versus demonic wisdom. James 3 and 17 says, <clears throat> But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily be to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now, when James said the wisdom is from above, that's really referring to Christ because Christ came from above. He left heavenly glory and was incarnated and become a man and become the lamb. Praise the Lord. So it's really pointing to Christ. Just using more allegory, you could say a figure of speech than the word itself. So I want to break this down from this passage. God's wisdom is. God's wisdom is. Because that's what James will do in this passage. He breaks it down. We're going to look at it um, one by one. And first of all, he says God's wisdom is pure. Uh, and all of these things James gave, you could say really, um, uh, all these adjectives that James uses to describe God's wisdom, uh, Christ is all of these things. Christ is from above, for example. Christ is pure. Christ is our peace. Christ is gentle. Christ is easily to be entreated. He's full of mercy and good fruits. Uh, Christ is without partiality. And Christ, of course, is without hypocrisy. But God's wisdom manifests in our life in a great practical sense, the fruit of it, the fruit of the spirit that we see within us. Number one, God's wisdom is pure. It means it's unadulterated with corruption. It's single hearted. That means that God's wisdom is single uh, hearted set on Jesus. It's set on Christ. It's drawn from Christ. That's where God's wisdom is. It's pure. It's unadulterated. It's not mixed with man's wisdom. And that happens so much, especially in our time we live in today. And our time is not unique. Uh, it's been this way for many years, even in Paul's day, in James' day, the first century. And what would happen is God's wisdom would be mixed with man's wisdom. But God's wisdom, as James would say here, is pure. It's not mixed with man's wisdom. Uh, it's not the Bible mixed with psychology. It's not mixed with anything. It's pure. And number two, God's wisdom, it's peaceable, <clears throat> which means it promotes God's peace and brings an end to hostility. That's the ideal of true godly wisdom. It promotes God's peace. It brings an end to hostility. These are marks of one that is really walking in the wisdom um, of God. And ultimately, it's Christ in us that is God's wisdom. As Christ is living in us, these are the marks I think we see in our life if we're really allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in us as we ought to and as we're living by faith. These things you could say is fruit. These things are fruits of the Spirit. It's peaceable. And if we're living by faith and we see this manifest in our life and we know we're living by faith as we ought to and we're growing in the Lord, it promotes God's peace. It brings an end to hostility. So you could say God's wisdom is not always looking for a fight. Get that? It's not always looking for an argument. It's not complaining about this or that. It's not looking for hostility. It actually brings an end to hostility. God's wisdom is peaceable. And number three, God's wisdom, uh, it's gentle. And gentle, lit, general, gentle, uh, and gentle literally, it means equitable, 
fair, and mild. Several of these points James gives, they go hand in hand, one with another. Gentle, uh, equitable, fair. It treats people fairly. Uh, it's mild. Number four, God's wisdom. It's easily to be entreated. God's wisdom is easily to be entreated, uh, which means it's easily obedient and willing to yield. You know, a mark of God's wisdom in our life is that God doesn't have to <clears throat> pull us uh, through a keyhole backwards to finally get us to obey his will. We can be stubborn, amen? Uh, all of us can be stubborn. We can all have that inner mule within us that's stubborn, some more than others. But a manifestation of God's wisdom in us again, uh, that God doesn't have to beat our head against the wall over and over again to just finally get us to obey. Now that can happen in our life because we do, sometimes we're just ignorantly disobedient and we just don't know. And God has to teach us. He has to train us. He has to allow us to go through trials to bring us to that point. But the mark of godly wisdom as we grow in the Lord is that we become more easily obedient to the Lord. It's a mark of maturity. We're more easily obedient to the Lord. And number five, God's wisdom is full of mercy which means really it speaks of kindness towards other, others. And there's a lot of other ways this could be described. Uh, for example, compassionate can be added to this here. Uh, you're compassionate toward the sensitivities of others. Uh, you're compassionate towards the lack of other people have. And notice what James said here, not just merciful, <clears throat> but he said full of mercy. And number six, God's wisdom is good fruit, uh, which ultimately it speaks of the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 20 through, 22 through 24. Speaks of the fruit of the Spirit. And that um, and what that is, uh, that the wisdom of God is full of good fruits. Uh, the fruit of the Spirit, which really is the character of Jesus, is love and joy and peace and temperance and faithfulness and patience. And number seven, God's wisdom, the wisdom of God is without partiality, which that means uh, it doesn't judge people by the personal, by personal bias, in other words, uh, by the law of me. How do you benefit me? How do you make me look? What you can do for me? Do you line up with me? And so that's partiality. And number eight, God's wisdom is without hypocrisy. God's wisdom is without hypocrisy, which means it's genuine, uh, without disguise. God's wisdom doesn't have two faces. It's without disguise. Uh, it's truly genuine. So God's wisdom is pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. <clears throat> and again, these are marks of one that is really walking in the wisdom of God. And ultimately, it's Christ in us that is God's wisdom. As Christ is living in us, these are the marks, I think, that we see in our life if we're really allowing the Holy Spirit to operate in us as we ought to, and we're living by faith. These things you could really say is fruit. These things are fruits of the Spirit, and we see this manifest in our life, and we know that we're living by faith as we ought to, and we're growing in the Lord. Amen. Uh, verse 18 says, And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace to them that make peace. Now James is connecting this again to the wisdom of God. 
And this statement here, the fruit of righteousness equals the fruit of justification by faith. And justification is God declaring us righteous. And what he's doing here, he's showing the proof of it in one's life. Uh, the fruit of it in one's life. And that is the theme of the book of James is the fruit or the proof or the evidence of justification in one's life. Not just saying I believe, but the proof of it. Uh, so James says the fruit of righteousness. I want to give you this scripture. Hebrews 12 and 11 says, Now no chastising seems to be joyful for the present, but painful nevertheless after it yields a peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. So the writer of Hebrews says, who the Lord love, he chastens, he disciplines. That discipline of the Lord, normally it manifests uh, in the realm of trials and testing of our faith. And that chastising doesn't mean, uh, doesn't seem to be joyful for the present, but painful when you're in it. When you're in the test, when you're in the fire of the test, it doesn't seem joyful at all. But get this. Then he said, nevertheless, he says afterwards, it yields or it produces the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained in it. In other words, if you stick to it, if you continue to believe and you have enduring faith and you keep believing in Jesus and you keep on holding on to his word, that trial, that testing will produce the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Ultimately, it's that character of Jesus. It's the fruit of justification by faith that can be seen as evidence in our life. And James said that it is sown in peace of them that make peace. And the ideal of that is this, that those that are at peace with God Bring God's peace to others. The fruit of righteousness in this analogy, it's like a seed and it's sown in peace. Again, those that are at peace with God, bring God's peace to others. And what it is, it's almost like an overflow in them and it's gonna overflow to other people. And I don't know about you, but I want that wisdom that is from above, not my own wisdom, because my wisdom is just going to mess things up. But I want God's wisdom, which is pure, peaceable, gentle, and easily to be entreated, full of mercy, good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Amen. And I want that fruit of righteousness sown in peace to overflow from me to others. Amen. And that concludes my lesson on James 3, 17 and 18. God bless.